by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen, أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله مدي فيوز أو مدني شنال الحمد لله عز وجل today we have a beautiful topic uh, inshallah look we can see behind me mashallah I'm thinking it's on this side yes well it's right behind me isn't it what you can see behind me my dear viewers is well, yes there's the sun we can't leave that my dear viewers but there's also trees and just thinking about it look how beautiful that looks if there were not trees there would it look as beautiful um, well if it was desert it still may look beautiful but I don't think as beautiful and inshallah, today we're not going to just going to be speaking about this picture that I have behind me. Today, inshallah, we're going to be speaking about trees. So, my dear viewers, another reason I'm so excited today is because today you need to join in. So, this could be telling me what your favorite fruit is, uh, you know, anything about your fruits or what you, anything about fruits. Secondly, so that's in terms of fruits, firstly, my dear viewers. Secondly, trees, plants. If you have any pictures in your house of plants, of trees, which you may have planted yourself, uh, I think they're called sapling uh, when you first plant them. So when they're little, uh, when they're really tiny, because they're just like a normal plant, but they grow into trees, no doubt. Uh, the initial stages, I think it is called a sapling, uh, if I am correct, which means it's small, a baby tree, you can say. So if you've planted any saplings, planted any trees, you can say, or even plants, general plants, whatever they may be. Some people may have grown fruit in the back gardens, vegetables in the back gardens. I remember for a lot of our cooking, my mother, may Allah Ta'ala grant her Jannah. Uh, my mother, she used to plant so many things. She used to plant so many things. She's always used to be in the garden. This is what even up until now she's remembered for. All the time, she's always, you know, working in the garden, plants, etc. And she's growing, you know, she always grows uh, various vegetables. And many of the foods that we eat, alhamdulillah, many things, I don't know, but, well, not now anymore, but used to be. Uh, when my mother was here, may Allah Ta'ala bless her. Many of the foods we used to eat, for example, the salan, which they used to make, the curries, which were made, uh, she would take so many of those ingredients from our garden alhamdulillah and the taste everybody said I, I didn't know my dear viewers i'm not the type of person who he especially when it comes to for example uh, curry just um, to give you an example now if i like it i like it but some people will be oh there's not enough salt in it you know add some salt i do not know about adding salt or what's less in it what's too much in it i have no idea I either like it or I don't like it. That's that's just I'm just a simple guy, my dear viewers. That's how it is. I don't know much, especially when it comes to this. Oh, there's too much of this in it. Or there's not enough of this in it. Let's add some. I have no idea when it comes to that. But Alhamdulillah, Azza um, Yes, it does have an effect on the food. So when it's from your own garden, it has a strong, a better taste. And you know, you could place it into your food. I'm just thinking. I can't remember the English word for tania. Tanya is what my mom used to call it. I can't remember the English equivalent. Somebody does know, maybe they can send that in too. Inshallah, Azzawajal. My dear viewers of inshallah, today's topic, Inshallah, Azzawajal, we shall be speaking about trees, plants. And yes, remember, within Islam, Islam teaches us this, to plant trees, to plant plants, to plant things, my dear viewers. And no doubt there are so many benefits and inshallah today we shall be hearing about some of those. My dear viewers, but as usual, we always begin by listening to the beautiful verses of the glorious Quran. Let's inshallah begin this morning too by listening to 
the glorious Quran. Remember, it does come along with the Urdu translation, but uh, when the Quran is being recited, it is our duty. We should be, my dear, we should give our full um, attention to the recitation of the Quran. Uh, what, whatever it is we are doing, if we can pause it, if we can wait, wait a moment, uh, please do, inshallah, and also make good intentions. Because for the more good intentions you make, inshallah, the more reward you shall gain. That's all for now. Let's move swiftly to the recitation of the glorious Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. मैं अल्लाह ताला की पनाह में आता हूँ शैताने मर्दूद से. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. अल्लाह के नाम से शुरू जो निहायत मेहरबान रहम वाला. ذلك بما قدمت أيديكم وأن یہ بدلہ ہے اس کا جو تمہارے ہاتھوں نے آگے بھیجا اور اللہ بندوں پر ظلم نہیں کرتا جیسے فرعون والو اور ان سے اگلوں کا دستور وہ اللہ کی آیتوں سے منکر ہوئے تو اللہ نے انہیں ان کے گناہوں پر پکڑا بے شک اللہ قوت والا سخت عذاب والا ہے یہ اس لیے کہ اللہ کسی قوم سے جو نعمت انہیں دی تھی بدلتا نہیں جب تک وہ خود نہ بدل جائیں اور بے شک اللہ سنتا جانتا ہے جیسے فرعون والوں اور ان سے اگلوں کا دستور انہوں نے اپنے رب کی آیتیں جٹلائیں تو ہم نے ان کو ان کے گناہوں کے سبب ہلاک کیا اور ہم نے فرعون والوں کو ڈبو دیا اور وہ سب ظالم تھے بے شک سب جانوروں میں بدتر اللہ کے نزدیک وہ ہیں جنہوں نے کفر کیا اور ایمان نہیں لاتے وہ جن سے تم نے معاہدہ کیا تھا پھر ہر بار اپنا عہد توڑ دیتے ہیں اور ڈرتے نہیں تو اگر تم کہیں انہیں لڑائی میں پاؤ تو انہیں ایسا قتل کرو جس سے ان کے پس ماندوں کو بھگاؤ اس امید پر کہ شاید انہیں عبرت ہو اور اگر تم کسی قوم سے دگا یعنی عہد شکنی کا اندیشہ کرو تو ان کا عہد ان کی طرف پھینک دو برابری پر بے 
بے شک دگا والے اللہ کو پسند نہیں ولا اور ہرگز کافر اس گھمنڈ میں نہ رہے کہ وہ ہاتھ سے نکل گئے بے شک وہ آجز نہیں کرتے قرآن We should uh, familiarize ourselves with the Qur'an. And as I was saying, or as I generally do say, every single day we mention the chapters of the Qur'an. Let's see if we can remember them. For those that do know them, please do recite along with me. So chapter number one, the first chapter of the Qur'an is Surah Al-Fatiha. And then after that we have Surah Al-Baqarah. Chapter number three, Surah Ali Imran. Chapter number four, Surah An-Nisa. Chapter number five, Surah Al-Ma'idah. Chapter number six, Surah An-A'am. Chapter number seven, Surah Al-A'raf. And chapter number eight, my dear viewers, is the chapter we are on now, which is, what is it, Surah Al-Anfal. Alhamdulillah. Um, hopefully try to go over these regularly. I'm going to try to do it so that you can just get it in your mind. Now, sometimes by... Sometimes you don't even have to pay much attention, but when you listen to things uh, regularly, then they automatically, your mind is, is, there's like different types of memories in there. There's the first, which is the sensory memory. Um, in psychology, I remember st studying this. There's a sensory memory, there's a short-term memory, there's a long-term memory. Now, sensory is those things which you're looking at, but you're not really paying much attention to. And then there's a short-term memory which lasts about, I think, 18 or so seconds, which you remember for about 18 or so seconds, and then you forget. Uh, I hope I'm not completely wrong. It's been years, but I think this is how it was, about 18 or so seconds. And then there's a long-term memory. And there's no limit to the long-term memory, my dear viewers. But it's said that to take things from the short-term memory to the long-term memory, there's different ways. Um, one of the, the ways is repetition, by constantly repeating something. This is one of the ways to take something from your short-term short memory to long-term memory. This is how you remember things for a longer time, my dear viewers of Inshallah. So when you regularly hear things and you've heard it so many times, then automatically it comes to your long-term memory. Um, so... But what was I say? What were we talking about? The surahs, the chapter of the, the chapters of the Quran. If inshallah keep repeating them, then okay, some of you may not have tried to read after me or remember them. But hopefully, just by listening to them regularly, maybe we'll learn about them, inshallah or learn them, inshallah. Uh, my dear viewers of Madani channel, we have listened to uh, the glorious Quran. Let's now move on to the Naj Sharif of the greatest of all mankind. The peace of our hearts and our minds, the most generous and kind, the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madani channel, let's listen to the narrative, the praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For those of you that do know the words, Please do join in. Those who don't, just enjoy listening to it, inshallah. Let's move to the Naj Sharif. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Aapki nisbat anana e Hussain, hai badi daulat anana e Hussain, dur kar furqat anana e Hussain. اپنی دے قلبت اے نانا اے حسین
حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی غم تو غارہ چین لے لے گی نہ دے دے دو یہ راحت اے نانا اے غسے اب مدینے میں بلا کر دور کر یہ غم فرقت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اے نانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اے نانا اے حسین میں مدینہ کا مسافر اب بنو کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین چل مدینہ کی بشارت دیجئے کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت میرے آقا یا نبی میرے آقا یا نبی آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین اپنا غم اور چشم نم دے دیجئے کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین عشق میں آہے برور و تار ہو کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اے نانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اے نانا اے حسین یا رسول اللہ ہی انظر حالنا یا حبیب اللہ ہی اسم قالنا انہی فی بحر ہم من مغرس خزیدی ساحل لنا اشکالنا اپنے جلبوں سے عطا فرمائیے نزع میں راحت اے نانا اے حسین دو بقیے پاک میں دو گز زمین تم پہے تربت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اے نانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اے نانا اے حسین دعوت اسلامی والوں پر صدا کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین ہر ولی کا واسطہ تار پر کیجئے رحمت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین دور کر فرقت اے نانا اے حسین اپنی دے قلبت اے نانا اے حسین آپ کی نسبت اے نانا اے حسین ہے بڑی دولت اے نانا اے حسین صلو علی الحبیب صلو اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلو اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم ادیو زمان انشاءاللہ ماشاءاللہ وعزوالل you are watching rise and shine سبحان اللہ نانا refers to the mother's father so it's a grandfather the maternal meaning from the mother so the mother's father so some people will be thinking who is it we are referring to is it Hazrat Imam Hussain yes well Hazrat Imam Hussain whose name was mentioned but it's referring to the grandfather of Hazrat Imam Hussain 
the greatest of all mankind sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the mother of hazrat imam hussein radhiyallahu anhu was hazrat fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha and she was a daughter of the greatest of mankind rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so hazrat hassan and hazrat imam hussein radhiyallahu ta'ala anhuma they were both or they are both the grandchildren of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this was calling out to the nana of hazrat imam hussein who is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself uh, alhamdulillah now this is just to you know some people would possibly be thinking why does he keep saying nana hussein nana a hussein a means o o hussein the grandfather of uh, hazrat imam hussein radhiyallahu ta'ala an nevertheless my dear viewers of the inshallah you are watching rise inshallah today my dear viewers today's topic today inshallah azzawajal we shall be Uh, speaking a little about trees i remember once when i was young and as i said mashallah my mother would always be in the garden you know planting things or taking care of the plants all the time um whenever i used to come home i used to be like mom and you know as soon as i opened the door i used to call out mom and i used to get the answer from the back garden if the weather was good my mom was always outside in the garden may allah ta'ala uh, grant her all the happiness of the akhirah Now I remember once she said to me she said um you know Shabazz come over here and she gave me a plant and she told me to plant it and this was beautiful I was just a young kid but my mother told me to plant it so she said he you plant this and I was like mom why and she says the one thing about me and my mother is we didn't well, we did kind of have that body where I wasn't able to speak our own language um properly sadly So uh just some words of advice for all those people out there um if their own parents and there will be people in this situation why because I've been in this situation uh, I don't see many others in it but suddenly I was one of those in the situation but I was not able to have a pro- proper conversation with my own parents and uh, now alhamdulillah I've learned a lot more of my own language I'm able to speak I wouldn't say properly but I'm able to uh, speak alhamdulillah good enough But them days I couldn't speak properly with my mother. So just some words of advice uh for those individuals let's just say the mother doesn't speak English and you speak English you need to learn. You need to don't think they need to learn your language no. You need to be able to speak to them. You need to learn their language. You need to be able to speak to them inshallah wa azza. Obviously it's good if they can um somehow try to aid you help you maybe learn you know English but what's important is their own language that's their mother tongue we're expecting them to learn english whereas we've been and this is getting into the language my dear viewers um but we should be able to at least be able to speak to our parents this is something i missed out on and this is why i feel strongly about it and i wish to share it my dear viewers but as i was saying that she would tell me to she once told me to take this plant and she goes place it uh, in the ground and I was like why and she said because you get nakia so this is their way of saying good deeds so plant this and that was i think the first ever time i planted something now i don't even know because as i said i was a kid i don't even know what that was that i planted all i know it was some sort of plant my mother told me to plant it i placed it in the ground and then she played she placed some of the soil on top etc So that was possibly my first ever experience that I can remember and possibly I hope not well it's not my only experience but a proper plant uh, yes my main experience of planting something and that was brilliant mashallah because from that age my mother asked me or told me to plant something and this would be brilliant um and if i was able to understand and speak to my mother more you know there's so much i could have learned this is in a way is sort of a regret that i feel um but there would be many of you whose mothers or even fathers they would be spending time in the garden and you yourselves won't be you yourselves won't be spending much time in the garden you think or oh, let them do it but trust me what they know is very very important about the trees about plants the seasons for everything even trees now we think yes we'll cut all the trees at once no different trees are to be cut in different seasons 
So we may think, oh, it's summer now, the weather's good, let's cut all the trees. But some trees are not to be cut in summer. So it depends on the seasons. So your parents will know all of these things, how to plan things, how to do things. And not only that, my dear viewers, uh, another is also things such as medicine, medication. You know, things which are good for us, things which are healthy for us. You know, plant things, different types of foods, different types of veg. I have no idea how to plant. I have no idea about plants when it comes to the real thing. I don't know, my dear viewers. If I wanted, I'd wish to have so many fruit plants uh, in my garden, but I don't know which ones, how to plant them, you know, what time of year they should be planted or how it works. I have no idea. I just know that you put a plant in the ground and you put water on top. Now, maybe there will be some individuals who uh, do regularly plant things or, you know, they would have so many things in the garden. Please do send in some information, inshallah. But the point to put across is, my dear viewers, that there would be many of us who are fortunate that their parents do plant all of these things. Uh, and I would say, if possible, generally you should spend as much time with the parents anyway. If possible, spend time with them, learn. Tell them to teach you about plants. You know, we come across some people who, they, mashallah, they know so much. They're like, they'll tell you the name of this, and they'll tell you the name of this plant, the name of that. They're able to identify them. Uh, Allahu Akbar, there's so much, my dear viewers, when it comes to plants, there's so much to learn about them. And it would be good to learn about them, to grow our own foods. Because many of the foods that we do consume, that we do eat, um, there's a, a huge process. They, you could just simply say that process before they reach us. And much of their benefit is lost on the way of much of the true benefit of those fruits, those veg, those foods is lost, my dear viewers. And in order to gain the true, the most benefit out of it, uh, if we were to take it from our own garden, you know, so beneficial, uh, inshallah. So this is just a separate note, inshallah. Hazrat Sayyidina Salman Farsi, he said that those people who live in Persia, people of Persia, they would have long lives. People in Persia will live very, very long. Now, as to why the Persians had such long lives, the Mufassirun, the commentators of the glorious Quran, they state that the kings of Persia, they loved digging canals and planting trees. They loved digging canals and planting trees. And it was due to this that they had long lives. This is what those who explain the Quran, this is what they tell us. That the people of Persia, this is the reason why. Because there would be so many canals, which is water. And they would uh, plant so many trees too. A prophet, alayhi salam, a prophet. So it was a different prophet. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to why the people of Persia had long lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, saying, Now these people, they populate my city, which is why they live in the world for such a long time. And he said that Hazrat Sayyidina Amin Muawiyah later on in his life, he would also, he began working in fields. He understood the benefits and greatness of this. So this is a sunnah of a great companion. Hazrat Amir Muawiyah who was a great companion, he was a scribe where the Prophet would call him to write things and many times the revelation, the Qur'an, when it was revealed, the Prophet would um, order specific people to write it down and amongst those individuals was Hazrat Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah So this is from amongst his sunnas to be working in fields etc. But one benefit which we just said what? Planting trees, uh, digging canals possibly, you know, wherever it's needed that is, or planting trees, my dear viewers, is, well, is, well we hear is healthy, don't we? But the, from, now, from here, we've also been told that in Tafsiri Kabir, it mentions that by planting trees, this can aid in us having a long life too. Subhanallah. Uh, my dear viewers of Mandani Channel,
planting trees is something we should do. It's good to do. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has uh, recommended and encouraged us to plant trees. How? It said that the Muslim who plants a tree or cultivates a crop, then for every bird that eats from it, for every human that eats from it, this shall be counted as sadaqa for him. Subhanallah. So all I need to do is plant that tree and then there will be possibly insects. Yes, it said bees too in other various hadith shrif. It's stated here, everything that a Muslim plants and then a human, a animal or a bird eats from it, it will become sadaqa for him up until the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. So all it takes is for us to plant something. Sometimes we complain, oh yes, but uh, subhanallah. I remember somebody complaining that oh, our animals are eating up all of this. And I was thinking, and it was a plant of my own mother's. So I was thinking, subhanallah, that's good. Because this hadith came to mind. That, you know, okay, at least they're eating it. And subhanallah, even animals eating it, the person who plants it is given reward. And if you use the channel, uh, subhanallah, imagine how many animals, birds come across, will possibly take something, you're given reward. Up until the day of judgment. And you know, there will be many birds that come benefiting from that. You shall be given the reward. Humans possibly plucking something from a tree, you shall be given reward. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madani channel, planting trees and subhanallah is, is beautiful, isn't it? That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 1400 plus years ago, over 1400 years ago, he taught us to plant trees. Over 1400 years ago, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught, taught us and told us to what are the benefits of planting trees. And now 1400, a thousand years plus later, a thousand years later, we have a global crisis, a global problem. What is this? That there is mass deforestation. Mass deforestation, meaning plants, uh, sorry, trees are being cut. And some people would think that nowadays, I remember I was watching a documentary, some people would think, that, oh no, nowadays we wouldn't have this problem because everybody knows about it. No, my dear viewers. That risk is still there. There is still hundreds of acres, hundreds and thousands of acres being of trees being chopped down every single day, every single day. So we do, everybody is an internationalist, except internationally that this is a problem. There used to be rainforests, there used to be huge rainforests, and every day that's being shortened and shortened, you can say, reduced every single day. Ghana used to have a huge uh, rainforest. Those individuals from Ghana who are watching, subhanAllah, uh, subhanallah, Ghana still does have a huge rainforest, but not as big as it used to be. And it's not only just saying to, speaking to those people, no, it's us here too, wherever we are. All those people who are chopping down trees, um, we all need to understand. That, and yes, to a need, it is needed. But how much is it needed? And some people have nothing got to do with trees. Me, myself, personally, I have never chopped down a tree. I'm thinking, have I ever? before it becomes a lie. Have I ever chopped down a tree? I don't think I have, in fact, I have removed a tree. I will come to think of it. I have removed a tree from a particular garden, but yes, Alhamdulillah, planted another one in this place. But generally chopping down a tree for any other reason, Alhamdulillah, I have never done so. And it would be the same with many of you. You would be thinking, I've never chopped down a tree. It's not only as directly chopping down trees, there are other ways too. And this is that those things which come from trees, are we wasting those? Paper, the amount of paper that is wasted, really. We are wasting so much paper on a daily basis. So much paper is being wasted on a daily basis. Tell me, couldn't we have saved that? 
made use of some parts. So sometimes, okay, but let's just say somebody's drawing. So they begin drawing something. Oh no, I made a mistake. Okay, go to the next page. Or scrunch that up, throw it away. No, my dear viewers. Where you can use the most of something, you know, maybe rip out the, the part that's still okay, that's still free, and try to use that. If you can rub something out with a pencil, rub it out. Don't waste paper, rubbers. Rubber also come from inside of a tree. You know, don't waste these things. Why? Because when we are wasting these things, what's happening? We're wasting these things, and then we need to buy more. And when we purchase more, what's happening? Those people who are selling it to us, their demand is rising. They need to sell more. Their product is, is, is finishing, so they themselves, the retailers, they need to purchase more from the wholesalers. Then the wholesalers, because they have so much of a demand, they need to you know, produce more or take it from those people who produce it. And how do the people produce it? By chopping down more trees. The more trees they chop down, my dear viewers, the more of a problem this becomes for us. So remember, it is the job for everyone, especially I would say with children, especially with children, even elders, you know, elders are not much better. But children more, please, please remember this. Try not to waste paper. You may think, yes, oh, I've got so much paper. Why do I need to worry? But remember, by wasting paper, they need to chop down more trees. And more trees are being chopped down. On a daily basis, there are so many trees which are being chopped down, my dear viewers. And because of this, of this, so many trees which are being chopped down, yes, it is affecting, you know, it's said that global warming um, is one of the byproducts, you can say, one of the results of mass deforestation. So this is one way in which it is affecting us. Uh, the trees take in carbon dioxide. Thus you can say the dirt which is released from us, we take in oxygen. The trees release oxygen. We take in the oxygen. That is pure, it is clean, it is good for us. And we let out carbon dioxide. And when there's so much carbon dioxide, then this itself also plays a part in global warming. So my dear viewers of the child, the trees, they purify, you can say, they purify the air for us. So we need trees. My dear viewers of the child, let's inshallah go to our daily uh, reminder and then hopefully we shall soon be joined by our guest too. So Allah ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Dear Wisdom the channel, hanging fruit growing in gardens, shade giving trees and fragrant bright flowers make for pleasant viewing. We enjoy these beautiful sights and reap their benefits. Have you ever wondered how much hard work goes into making a beautiful garden? A gardener sows seeds into the ground, then waters them, arranges the plants to receive sufficient amounts of sunlight, adds fertilizer, and protects the weak young saplings until they become trees. He sprays them to remove pests and ties those needing support to a piece of wood to keep them upright. After tremendous effort and care, beautiful fragrant flowers and food-bearing shade-giving trees appear. And every part of these trees is useful. Just as a seed needs constant care and attention until it becomes a tree, children need ongoing care and nurturing until they become independent and successful. Merely admitting your child into a school or madrasa is simply not enough. Here are some matters which are easily overlooked. Number one, the way in which crops are irrigated and fertilized, the mind of a child should be adorned with sound tenets and teachings of Islam. This is so the tribulations of the era do not harm or sway their faith. Number two, similar to how plants are given water and sunlight to prevent them from dying, give your child the best education and upbringing possible. This will ensure that their intellectual and mental potentials are fulfilled. In this way, your child can develop into a successful member of the society who strives for the betterment of humanity. Number 3. Plants and crops are protected from pests 
and changes in weather so they survive and continue to grow. Likewise, be wary of who your child spends time with and protect them from bad company so that their morals and characters are not marred. Number 4. Trees and crops are cultivated for a purpose and benefit. Similarly, teach your child to live purposeful life from an early age. There is no benefit in living life without a purpose. If children's food, education, upbringing and environment are carefully looked after from an early age, they will grow up with the skills to be successful and the morals to be respected members of the society. Dear Vyasa Mani channel, if we keep following these things, we will ensure that our child will become a successful member of the society. May Allah grant us salvation from hell and grant us the ability to make a good upbringing for our children. Ameen bijahi nabil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam and even some of the inshallah we're speaking about yes the, the hadith sharif it mentions that when birds were to eat from it if animals are to eat from the tree if humans are to eat from the plants or trees then the person who plants it gains a reward uh, there's another hadith sharif which says that whosoever built a house without any oppression or cruelty or planted a tree without any oppression or cruelty. He will continue to gain reward for as long as someone or something from the creation of Allah benefits from it. Allahu Akbar. So it is any benefit of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You shall gain reward, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. My dear viewers of Madan Shalai said that once, Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Darda, Radilahu Ta'ala'an. A Beautiful companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, really a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He once he was planting a walnut tree. Subhanallah, he was planting a walnut tree, um, and a person passing by him said that you have reached a very old age. Meaning, look, you're really old now. By the time you've just planted this tree, it is really small, it is tiny, it is a baby tree, you can say. But, you know, you'll possibly be have a, a respect for where you would have passed away by the time you can gain anything from this tree. Walnut trees, my dear viewers of Madan Shah, as I said, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have a walnut tree. And they do take very, very long to grow. Uh, possibly years, I'm not sure. Again, this is something which we'll need to check up, inshallah, azzawajal. How long before a walnut tree does uh, reach its prime or when it actually begins to give, uh, produce these nuts, my dear viewers of the channel. But they are huge trees and they go very, very high and then they branch out and there are walnuts, my dear viewers of the channel. And you'll only get some if the squirrels leave you some. Allahu Akbar. That's if the squirrels leave any back for you. But as they said in Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala an. He planted a walnut tree. And somebody said, look, you know, you're, you have reached a very, very old age, uh, meaning that you're going to be passing away very soon, but yet you are still planting a tree. You know, how are you going to eat from this tree? Hearing this, Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Darda, he replies, he says, I know this. Others will eat the fruit. However, I will receive its reward even if that be after my death. My dear viewers of Mandani channel, remember there are some actions, this is really important, there are some actions which yes, we perform in this world whilst we are alive, but the fruits are reaped even after our death. So meaning the fruits, it could be literally fruits which are eaten by others, or it could be meaning in terms of reward, the fruit. Fruits in terms of reward, which even after we pass away, we can benefit from. There's a hadith sharif that when the son of Hazrat Adam والسلام, meaning when the children of Hazrat Adam والسلام, when they pass away, in amaluhu, that their actions are finished. They cannot perform no more good actions. When a person is dead, that's it, finished. 
when the angel of death takes my soul, now there's nothing I could do to, you know, it's finished, it's over. My time that I had has elapsed, has finished. I cannot perform any more good actions. I cannot now pray salah. I cannot now go and give zakat to somebody. I cannot now respect my parents. No matter if it's in qata'a amaluhu illa, except from thalatha. Except from three things, my dear viewers. Illa min thalatha, except from three things. And the first which is mentioned is sadaqa jariyah. Continuous reward. And inshallah, we shall be speaking about this. Uh, firstly, mashallah, we have been joined by our guest, mashallah, if he is able to hear us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, my viewers of Madhani channel, uh, this is our respected Imran Bhai from South Africa. Uh, Imran Bhai, I hope you are well and in the best of health, MashaAllah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Shabazz Bhai, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, Jazakallahu Khaira for joining us. The picture they put up, you're looking beautiful. May Allah Ta'ala bless you. Uh, Imran Bhai, I was going to ask, you, MashaAllah, you're from South Africa. Have you traveled South Africa, you know, up and down, everywhere, would you say? Yes, yes, yes. Do you have, yeah, do you have a rainforest in South Africa? Uh, we have got we have got a nice amount of areas that have got rainforests. Um, is, it is it considered too? Uh, I wouldn't say so, but 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 we have got a lot of rural rural land that is enriched mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. with lots of trees and and forestations. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of lot of lot of. Um, a lot of rural life, a lot of plant life, but that's particular or typically in all countries in the rural areas. And needless to say, you know, in the city areas, is that where the problem is where we are, where we are really mm -hmm. deprived. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anything you could tell us, uh, maybe specific. Well, in fact, you yourself, do you do you plant things? Do you have things in a garden? Plants, trees, anything, any type of fruit trees? Yeah, I was just listening on to you and, you know, I must say it was very inspiring and, you know, I'm, I'm so amazed by this, by this thought and this thinking that, uh, you know, Dawud Islam is encouraging us to, to plant trees. Exactly, exactly. Um, yes. And, 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 and in, in where I live in a, in a very urban area, in my, where I live, my place of residence, uh, there is a small area that, that has sand and there's actually concreted mm -hmm. right through. And uh, you must have gathered or heard in the difficulty and the unrest that South Africa has been through very recently, especially in Durban, where I live in KwaZulu Natal, the province. Mm -hmm. And one of the decisions we made as a community and as people living on the, you know, in the communities, we decided that we need to start planting in our in our own yards and becoming self-sufficient. Uh, oh, and, and it oh, is wow. something that has dawned upon the importance <clears throat> of becoming self-sufficient. In your own yards, because the, the the availability of food and food scarcity is it's, it's a problem not only in South Africa, but increasing around the world. And self sufficiency is key. And this is where for us all in in Durban, it's dawned upon us the importance of planting, you know, vegetables like potatoes, tomatoes, onions, the kind of things that we would need day to day. So I haven't planted to answer your question, but certainly it's something that Alhamdulillah we have been considering. Our survival is going to depend on becoming self-sufficient. Allah, 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 Allah. That's in fact Allah, that's Allah. beautiful uh, that you mentioned that there would be so many people around the world who already they, uh, are just surviving on what they are growing in their back gardens. Do you know anything about fruits and uh, you know plants, fruit trees, plants, uh, any type? I don't know. Well, what do you know about them? Do you know a lot about them? If you were to you know decide to be growing things, would you be able to? Alhamdulillah, I think I think I come from a cultural background of being uh, very close to to the earth where I lived when I was growing up. We, yeah. we had a lot of what they call in Urdu keti, you know, mm. a lot of mm. kids, a lot of things. Urdu was still uh, alhamdulillah kept as a language that we spoke in our home, especially with our 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 grandparents yeah. and perhaps my father. So yes, we. My, in fact, my grandmother, my dadima was, uh, and my grandfather, my dada and dadi were were farmers. And uh, they used to plant and they used to sell their produce in the local market here in Durban. So Alhamdulillah, does that, that, does that mean that you know how to do it? For example, my mother used to always be planting. About uh, going back to my root. Acha, acha. Had, did you had, hear the question? Meaning you said that, mashallah, your grandparents, may Allah Ta'ala bless them. 
Your grandparents used to work in the field, they were farmers. But does that necessarily mean that you can do that too? For example, me, myself, my mother used to do it, but yeah, I'm I not able I, to do it. Alhamdulillah, I think I, think, I, think I, I will be able to do it. I mean, in my generation, yeah. I think I will be able to do it. My concern is obviously the generation, my children, whether they will be able to do it, whether, you know, getting your hands mixed up with sand and digging and planting and <laughs> feeling the sand, whether it's going to be too dirty for our kids. But it's certainly, it's, it's something, it's a wake-up call for us, isn't it? Definitely, Look definitely, the, no the doubt. impact of, of urbanization, of industrialization on the environment, global warming, mm -hmm. the greenhouse effect. It seems as though we have little choice but to start developing the mindset of farming, of planting trees, of cultivating our own products. And even if you look at Shabazz Bhai, what is being produced by the run of the mill farmers now? Everything is fast produced, meaning that, you know, if mm -hmm. a cabbage is supposed to take you two months to reach its full life through chemical mm -hmm. injection, mm -hmm. it's now being done in two days, in two weeks. So what are we really consuming? Allah. Allah. Are we consuming mm -hmm. exactly. the product? So it, it really, it, it, it's, it's a really big reset and rethink for us in terms of going back to this uh, um, beautiful, I would say, beautiful habit of, of planting for our, of our subsistence. Imran, any last words, inshallah? Yeah, I think, I think, I think, uh, I just want to appeal to the viewers out there that this, this, this planting and self-sufficiency is a very, very important, dear viewers of Madini mm -hmm. channel. And I'm very inspired, Shabazz, by the honest truth, goodness truth is, I'm very inspired just sitting here, being part of your program, Having you know, you challenged me, and I have accepted this. Yeah. And I think if we all can go out there and we can make a little contribution and become, start growing our own little plant, something that we can use, and get our children involved, it will be a phenomenal change in mindset. It's about going back to simplifying our lives because our lives are moving at a very fast pace. And Alhamdulillah, this full humble effort of planting, touching the soil. Inshallah, I believe it can have a spiritual impact on us in the form of humbling us, in the form of simplifying us, in the form of appreciating the Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I planted a seed and look at how it germinated and look at how I managed to cultivate something for myself. Mashallah, mashallah. That's all for now. Imran Bhai, Jazakallah khaira. May Allah Ta'ala bless you. We are going to move to the daily Hadith Shreef, Inshallah. And today we also have our fruit segment. Imran Bhai, Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hadith views of Madhani Shal, inshallah, we are going to move on to the, the daily hadith shreef, inshallah, and then we shall continue. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. A Muslim is often intrigued about a particular matter. And that is, when will the day of judgment occur? Sometimes we don't think about a key question in relation to the hereafter and judgment day. What have I prepared for it? But we're all very eager to learn about the signs of the day of judgment. How far is it from our era? Which is not necessarily a wrong thing. But one thing to note here is the way we are eager to know whether Qiyamah, the day of judgment is Qareeb or not, we should also prepare for it as well. One hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions certain signs that will occur before the Day of Judgment. Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu ta'ala is the narrator. He says, Sami'atu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul. I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Inna min ashraati sa'ati an yurfa'al ilm. I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that from the signs of the hour, meaning Judgment Day, is that knowledge will be lifted, will be raised. الجهل, and ignorance will become widespread. الزنا, and adultery, fornication will become rampant, will become rife. الخمر, and alcohol will be drunk in large amounts, in abundance. Males will be less in number and females will be greater in number. To the extent that 50 women 
will be supervised by one male, will be looked after, or there will be one male who is a guardian of 50 women. Now, subhanAllah, this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ tells us when judgment day will occur, or the signs of the day of judgment. And if we are truthful with ourselves, and we can't lie to ourselves, majority of these signs are occurring right now. How many people are seeking religious knowledge, sacred knowledge? And jahal, or ignorance is widespread. People say what they like about the deen. They won't dare say anything regarding another field because they're not experts. But when it comes to the deen, they'll say anything and everything. Ma'adullah. Zina, again, is widespread. It's happening. Youngsters are struggling to get married and then they're resorting to haram. There's pressures of society. Parents are not agreeing to marriages and all sorts of problems are occurring. Alcohol is being drunk. It's easily available. People are drinking. People are consuming it. And the last sign, we can see remnants of that as well. So the best thing for a Muslim to do is gain knowledge of the deen, knowledge of when the hour will be established, and prepare for the afterlife. Not just be interested in learning about the hadith, which is, is good to learn about the hadith, learn about the topics mentioned in the hadith, but the actual purpose behind all of this is to do amal. May Allah Ta'ala enable us to prepare for the hereafter. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My dear of Madhya inshallah, what is your favorite fruit, my dear of Madhya inshallah? Today too, we have a fruit. What fruit shall it be? Um, let's inshallah move straight to our fruit segment, my dear of inshallah. Let's move straight to our fruit segment. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. May Allah bless you in the world. The strawberry is one of the most common known fruits in the entire world. Strawberries are found in almost all parts of the world. Its name does have berry in it. But actually, strawberry is not a berry. It belongs to the rose family. The strawberry is usually considered to be red, but it comes in yellow and green also. The strawberry on average contains 200 seeds and each seed is capable of growing a new strawberry plant. Although they don't always grow fruit immediately, but once they do, the plants can last up until five years. Ancient people believed that it could cure melancholy, fever, bad breath, chronic fainting, spleen and liver disorders. Modern science also endorses its benefits for the human body. Strawberries improve immune functioning. The strawberry is full of vitamin C and it is believed that it contains more vitamin C than an orange. It also contains the vitamin B9. The minerals include potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, and iron. Scientists now believe that strawberries have anti-aging properties as well. The strawberries help in lowering blood pressure. They promote a healthy eyesight, they regulate blood sugar and also alleviate allergy symptoms. The strawberry also helps to regulate mood, reduces inflammation, improves the vascular function, it improves your blood lipid profile and it reduces the harmful oxidation of LDL meaning bad cholesterol. It digests quickly and helps in maintaining a healthy weight. 
This strawberry is also helpful for a healthy and glowing skin and it is full of vitamin C which is essential for healthy skin. Strawberries are also used in making so many products and part of different cuisines especially as we all know in dessert making. Strawberries can be grown in greenhouses as well at a large scale and you can also enjoy homegrown strawberries as well. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. My reviews of Madrid, inshallah, mashallah, you are watching Rise and Shine. Today, uh, alhamdulillah, we've heard about strawberries. Strawberries are Definitely one of the most favorite overall, I would say. Overall, strawberries are definitely one of the most favorite. Um, Allah Akbar. Nowadays, whenever I think about strawberries, I think of my daughter. Uh, she'll never leave them. She'll just, Allahu Akbar. Um, and even some of the child, but generally strawberries. If not strawberry, the fruit themselves, the strawberry flavor in everything, whether it be ice cream, whether it be, you know, lolly sweets, uh, nearly anything in the yogurt, strawberry, you know, there's so many things with flavors. And all the time, strawberry flavor, you know, I want strawberry, I want strawberry. Uh, ice pops. Some people across the world will be thinking, what are ice pops? It's, they're simply just, I don't know, that it's ice with, which, with a added strawberry flavor. Uh, this is what we call ice pops, my dear viewers. You know, so again, what's one of the most favorite overall would be strawberry. Allahu Akbar. Strawberry is generally the so, well, you could say, most of the time a favorite in many things. You think strawberry, strawberry, yes, I want strawberry flavor. You love strawberry flavor. Alhamdulillah, he azza jal. viewers of Madani channel, Alhamdulillah, azza jal. Um, you are watching Raz and Shan. We are going to come to a close now, inshallah. And that's all for now. As we were saying, mashallah, today is fruit day, stressing the importance of one thing trees, uh, trees, I was going to say trees, Allahu Akbar. Trees, my dear viewers, planting trees as much as possible. Please do take a part and also take a part in protecting trees. How could you do this? By not wasting things, by not wasting things such as paper. Robert, these are two things which come to mind. There are many other things, inshallah. That's all for now. Inshallah, we shall continue tomorrow. For now, continue to recite salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine.